You ready? You're listening to The Real Pineapple Podcast Network. I've got another review for y'all from the Real Scary Series. I've got a review for Bodies, 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 which is directed by Helena Rajin and written by Sarah uh, uh, Delap. That's what I'm going to go with. Uh, this stars uh, an absurd cast, to, to be quite frank. It's got uh, Amanda Stenberg, uh, Maria Baklava, uh, Chase Sui Wonders, uh, Rachel Sanat, who is killing it right now lee pace and someone who is uh, admittedly starting to kind of wear me down a little bit and pete davidson um he's in here as well so to uh go ahead and jump in here i've talked about my love and straight up adoration for a24 and neon productions uh those two studios in particular are doing some of the best work in cinema right now and i'm so grateful that both of these studios exist um there's usually an a24 film on my best of every fucking year i i just i adore a24 so goddamn much and uh thank god for them uh straight up thank god for them and thank god for neon and thank god for these smaller studios who are giving these directors and writers different avenues to go ahead and express their art through pretty intense different types of genres and what i love about this movie from jump without spoiling it um this very similarly to um no one will save you is a twilight zone movie it is straight up a twilight zone movie when i got to the end of this movie and the ending in particular um it's very reminiscent of a certain twilight zone episode which i won't Say which episode, because if I tell you the episode, you'll pretty much be able to piece some things together. And I want you to go in as cold as possible this movie. So, <clears throat> this movie, as I mentioned, stars uh, Amanda Lestenberg, uh, who plays Sophie, and then uh, Maria Baklava, who plays B. Uh, you most likely know uh, Stenberg from uh, The Hate You Give, which she's fucking amazing uh, in the hate you give, uh, she's also pretty much one of one of maybe like three good performances in Dear Evan Hansen. Uh, she's she's fucking awesome. And then of course uh, Maria Baklava, you know from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three and the Holiday Special, uh, voicing uh, Cosmo the Space Dog, which is just amazing that she did that. And her big breakout, of course, of being in Borat's subsequent movie film, which. I stand by the fact she deserved, like, she deserved the Oscar, uh, Best Supporting Actress Oscar that year. She was fucking amazing. To to have that performance out the fucking gate, for that to be your, like, your debut, your coming out party, and then knock it out of the park like that, she, she deserved the Oscar. And it's absolute bullshit that she didn't get it, but uh, I digress. So they're dating um, uh, Sophie and B. Uh, the opening of this of the movie actually shows them making out, which cinema. But <laughs> the the plot as it is, they go ahead and they go to this party that's being hosted by Greg, who's played by Lee Pace. And I just gotta say, it's really funny to see Lee Pace in Guardians of the Galaxy, and you know he's covered up in all that blue makeup and everything. What a handsome dude! Like when I saw him in this, I was like, "What?" I was like, "Oh yeah!" Like hell yeah! I was like, I was excited to see him. I'm, I'm I'm a fan of Lee Pace. If you haven't seen his performance in Single Man, uh, he's great in that. He's he's really great in that. And uh, you know, of course, he's in those little Hobbit movies. You know, some people have seen those, kind of like those. But he he's awesome in here, and it was, it was really nice to see him. And the way he interacts with the rest of the group, uh, Jordan, Emma, Alice, and uh, David, uh, Pete Davidson's David, I uh, I gotta say, and I hate to give him credit, y'all know I hate to give Pete Davidson credit, I'm still mad about the King of Staten Island, but Pete Davidson's great in this, he, he's, it feels like he's very much playing 
just an even more paranoid version of himself, or maybe just himself. I don't know Pete Davidson, but, you know, probably would be paranoid. But David, and this is where a lot of the drama kind of takes off. The thing about this movie that makes it so Twilight Zone-esque is the fact that they're trapped in this house because of a hurricane. And so that's why they all go ahead and meet at this big mansion. It's because they're going to throw a hurricane party and celebrate and get high and drunk and fuck. And, you know, like like your classic hurricane party. And, and when Sophie shows up, everyone in the group is really shocked. Like, what the hell are you doing here? And without getting the spoilers, you find out about a pretty big falling out that Sophie had with the rest of the group. Uh, and then you go ahead and you add the fact that she's bringing B, who the film only uh, tells you she's only been dating for a couple weeks. So, you know, they're obviously still in the infant stages of their relationship. And so the trust, it's not really there. And that goes ahead and just is amplified as far as that divide because of the of what ends up happening and a death that occurs and from the first death on in this movie and I won't say who dies you just feel the walls start to close in around everyone and that for me is where the movie just shines um I was talking to uh, uh Nick over on the afternoon tune shout out to Nick at the uh, afternoon tune and we we're talking about the fact that not every film needs to be two hours. Some movies know exactly what they are. They don't need two hours. It's a, it's a, it's not even a quick job. It's just a, okay. We can tell the story that we want to tell in ninety-five minutes clean. It doesn't need to be an hour fifty. It doesn't need to be two ten. It can just be you know ninety, just over ninety minutes. And I appreciate the hell that we're getting back into that era where studios are starting to go. Oh, we don't need to just stretch this out for the sake of stretching it out. We'll only maybe stretch it out past 90 minutes if we have something to say, if the artist has something to say. But if we can do it in 90, we can, we'll can do it in 90. And I, I, I love that. Thank you. Keep doing this. This is a great, this is a great streak, Ron, everyone. Keep, keep this shit up. But at the end of the day, you just find out these are all miserable people. And it's that college miserable. And I mean that in the sense of, I think everyone remembers that friend group that you discover maybe it's you know people that you knew in high school that you just happen to keep hanging out with maybe you mean your freshman year but every group of friends there's always someone that's drama but you know you're close you're tight so you kind of put up with it but the problem is that because of this isolation and given the circumstances and the fact that a, a fucking murder occurs everyone's emotions are just are, are on just red alert anyway and these are people who aren't good with dealing with their emotions from jump and so when you combine all of that in the uncertainty of this relationship being in its infant stages between sophie and b and the fact that you find out some stuff about greg that you go oh they don't know greg very well and you guys are in this how what, what the fuck and then David has some drama with Greg because he's jealous that I mean, let's be real. If if you're trying to if you're trying to get laid and you and Lee Pace is in the room, you you're not getting laid. Like like look at Lee Pace. He's a handsome man. And and so David is being such a bitch about about Greg in a hilarious way as the viewer, but if you're in that room, you would be rolling your eyes going, dude, get over yourself. And there's so much conflict in this movie. It's fucking wonderful. And just the more the walls close in and the more that things get intense, you just find yourself going, wow, I, I don't know where this is going to end up. And that that's my favorite thing about this is it kept me on edge the whole time, but it kept me laughing the whole time. It, it's, it's a very well done. I don't know if I'd call it quite a dramedy. I, I'd probably lean more horror comedy, but this would be a really fun double feature, something like Death of Smoochie, which I, I might review before the end of the month. We're, we'll, we'll, we'll see where I'm at as far as reviews, but I, I adore this movie. Um, I haven't talked too much about Alice, who's played by Rachel uh, Rachel Sinat, who she, my God, she's, God, she's top 10, if not top five favorite actresses uh, working uh, right now. I, I fucking adore her. Also, you know, sup girl, but 
uh, between Shiva, uh, between Shiva Baby and Bottoms. I haven't reviewed Bottoms yet. I need to review Bottoms, but she she's fucking amazing. And <laughs> there's a point where she's screaming about something that happens to her that you'll know it when you get there. But that scene in particular, the way she plays that, uh, plays up the the terrible aspect of what's happening. But is able to inject just enough humor in there. It, it, that's it's such a fine line to walk. And everyone in this movie, this is one of those cases where everyone involved knew exactly how to play their character. It feels like everyone is just in sync in a way that it's elevating material that's already great, but making it awesome. And everything on screen for me was absolutely fantastic, uh, including the score. Um, I don't have who did. Uh, who did the score? Uh, let me see the score for bottoms. Uh, or, or not bottoms. Uh, bodies, bodies, bodies. I was, I'm thinking about bottoms. Um, but uh, oh my gosh, like, I cannot think. I I I can't find it. Um, but the the music's fa- uh, fantastic. Oh, a disaster piece. There we go. Um, yeah, they did a great fucking job. It, it's a very it's very vibey, and the irony of how some of the music plays versus the scenes they're in, it's almost it's like the music is almost like a joke in itself at certain points, the way the music comes uh, comes in and out. And yeah, this movie just, it's just, it's kind of great. Like, like the more, the more I think about, the more I like it. And I watched this a couple weeks ago for the first time. Uh, I, I wanted to get to it last year. I just, I just ran out of time. And I can't say this would have made the list, but this definitely would have been an honorable mention. It's one of those things that after I saw it, I went, you know, I'm going to watch that again. And I actually watched it uh, like twice uh, in, in the same week. And I actually liked it more the second time around. So I, I, I just have a blast with this movie. Um, there is one scene that I will talk about. And again, I'm trying to really dance around uh, spoilers uh, very, intentionally, uh, very intentionally. Um, there is this one use of the camera when there are multiple people in the car and the way it spins around like this overhead shot is so fucking cool and so well done you'll you'll when you see it you'll you'll go oh, okay that's what he's talking about there is a fight between I, I guess i can say this there there is an argument between uh emma who's played by she sweet uh, uh sweet wonders who i i mentioned but there's a fight between her and uh uh, Amanda, uh, Amanda Stenberg, Sophie. That is one of those fights where <sighs> that's a fight you could only have with someone that you know so well. But it's one of those scene. It's one of those fights where you go, "Do you come back from this?" Because there's some shit that's said between the two of them that I went, "Oh man, that that might be that might be the thing. That might be that line." that's cross that you think about whenever you're with that person and you just eventually go, yeah, we can't be friends anymore. Or you just maybe just stop texting very quietly. It, it It's a, it's uncomfortable as shit. And I love, love, love that scene so much. That is probably my favorite thing about this movie is the way the dialogue is written. It, 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 it there are multiple points where it could have come across like season one of Buffy where it really could have been almost like too hipsterish and you know tr- too cool, and yet again everyone plays it in a way that you go, okay, these people are annoying, but you start to like certain people more than others, and and unfortunately something that makes uh, something that makes this such a fun movie is how realistic it is and how some people that you just may not want to be around, especially in such a condensed space with such an intense situation, how these things could come out and how relationships could just be torn apart. And the absolute end of this movie, I, I actually would go up half a grade just because of the ending. Because when I got to the end, I was just like, son of a bitch. And it's it's sad, but I found myself laughing too. It's, oh, it's fantastic. There, there's a There's a couple deaths in here that actually shocked me. And not just because of who died, but the brutal fashion in which they died. Uh, this is a hard R. Um, I think the gore is really well handled here. And it's never... 
it never comes across like Eli Roth. That's never you know exploitive, but it's it's intense and it hurts more because this film is so dialogue uh, dialogue heavy. So some of those people that I mentioned that you might like more than other characters, you know, some of them end up dying, and in some of the ways that people go, it's just it's brutal in a inspired, uh, very intense way, and. I found myself at the end of the movie really thinking back on several people and some of the lines that they had. Uh, there is a line that I will spoil. I won't say who says it and, and what in, in what context, but uh, <laughs> one character flat tells another character who could date a spreadsheet with a superiority com- uh, with a superiority complex. That line is so goddamn brutal in the way it's delivered. You go, oh shit! Insert it like like you just you want to disappear in this argument. But that line in particular stuck with me in a way that I just went, this this is great. Like, this is so uncomfortable. And it's very much like Shiva Baby in that, in that point, in that context, where there are a lot of scenes that are just so uncomfortable with the dialogue that's being said, but that's actually why I love the scenes. So getting my final thoughts here, um, I think I'm going to stick with an A-plus on this. I don't think I'll go fan fucking tap. You know what? I don't do this often. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go. I don't give this great often. I'm going to give it a low fan fucking tastic. Because I really do love this movie. And I've already, you know, I mentioned I watched it a couple times in a week. So, yeah, that, that warrants a, a fan fucking tastic. So, yeah, I, I, I dug this. It's a low fan fucking tastic. It wouldn't have made my, my best of uh, last year. But it definitely would be an honorable mention. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I dug this. This is fun. So, little fan fucking tastic. But, uh, yeah, bodies, bodies, bodies. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Let us know in the comments. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter at jhunterrealpineapple. You can follow me on uh, TikTok as well at jhunterrealpineapple. Uh, follow me on Blue Sky as well at J Hunter Real Pineapple. You can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash J Hunter Real Pineapple. Oh, uh, God, where else? Um, oh, yeah, so speaking of Twitch, I am going to be hopping on Twitch like at the end of the month. I'm going to keep you all updated. Uh, but it might be on Halloween. It might be the 30th. I haven't decided yet, but I will be on Twitch um, later. In the month, I will keep y'all updated on that. Uh, you can go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. Uh, definitely rate the podcast. It helps us out a lot, uh, especially on Spotify. Go ahead and uh, rate us everywhere, but Spotify definitely helps too. But you can find us on SoundCloud, Apple Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, Tune Up, and Samsung Podcast at The Real Pineapple. Uh, don't forget to like both our pages on Facebook at The Real Pineapple and Real Pineapple Games. And, oh gosh, did I, did I mention everything? Oh, uh, Letterbox. You can find me on Letterbox at uh, Black Shazam. But, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm going to keep the Halloween films a-going. So, I'll have more Halloween reviews coming out, including reviews for uh, Pearl, uh, Jennifer's Body, uh, our reviews for The Twilight Saga are uh, up on the channel. I'm going to have reviews up for all the Scream films and no one will save you i'm gonna review fresh i'm gonna review probably an episode of twilight zone just because you know i typically do that gonna review um the x-files home episode i haven't seen that episode since i was eight years old actually no i saw it again when i was like 17 but it's been a while so i'm gonna watch that and i'm a little nervous to rewatch that i'm not gonna lie but i'm excited to watch it as well but uh, yeah, we've got a lot of reviews coming down the pipeline. I'm going to be getting back in the theater here in the next couple weeks after I get my latest uh, booster. Which, everyone, get your booster shot, get your flu shot. We're heading to, we're heading to flu season, y'all. I want y'all to be safe. But I'm going to be heading that back out to the theaters. Um, I don't really know what's, <laughs> what's playing right now. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to have uh, some new reviews up for, uh, the, uh, for theatrical releases. I will finally have a review of Barbie. Here by the end of the month, because I am going to finally watch Barbie since that's coming out on uh, 4K here in the next couple weeks. Uh, I don't know when Oppenheimer hits uh, home digital, but when that uh, hits, I'll have a review up for that as well. But everyone, thank you so much for listening. 
stay safe, take care of each other, and don't forget, as always, to keep it real. Ooh.